Hey everyone, Matt from Crank Engineering and back with the third video in this little series about welding machines and welding processes. So we've spoken about arc welding, we've spoken about MIG welding. So today we're going to cover the third one that I use a bit, which is TIG welding. So let's get straight over the machine and get started. Okay, so we looked at this machine a couple of weeks ago when it was set up for arc welding and with some change of some cables and plugging in an argon bottle to the back of this we have the capability to do some other welding with the same machine so this is my favorite way of uh, welding for motorcycle projects and for me the big benefit is the ability to weld a whole bunch of different materials and control the weld very carefully to get the result i want and that's really res the result of all these controls on the panel uh, and the way we configure the machine and the types of filler we use so Remembering in arc welding and in MIG welding, we had a consumable electrode that got used up and deposited into the weld. So you need some way of continually feeding in the electrode uh, or the consumable electrode into the weld. TIG welding is a little bit different. And what happens is we've got, still got a, a ground cable. So we've still got a return from the workpiece back to the machine because we still need to have electrical current or electrical circuit from one from one part of the machine through the workpiece and back to the machine again. So we've still got this. We have got a different, a different torch on the end of here. So this is a typical TIG torch and it's connected to the machine. So there's an electrical connection to the machine, but there's also a gas connection to the machine. So the gas comes in the back of the machine through a fitting and there's a, con a little solenoid that turns the gas on and off. And when it's turned on, it opens a little valve and the gas flows through the front here, through this hose and into the liner of this um, torch. There's a, there's a conduit in here for the gas to flow out. So what happens is the nozzle uh, releases a flow of gas which protects the weld while you're welding. So in arc welding, we've got a consumable electrode and the flux on the electrode is vaporized and protects the weld. In MIG welding, we've got a gas to shield the weld and arc weld, uh, TIG welding is a bit the same. So there's a gas shield for the weld. So that nozzle is what d delivers the gas. Okay, so in both arc and MIG, we had a consumable electrode. In TIG, we, have, we don't have a consumable electrode. So this is a non-consumable electrode and it's made of tungsten, which is where the T in TIG comes from. So it's tungsten and inert gas. So the inert gas is the argon, which gets pumped through the back and tungsten is the electrode. So this little guy is just designed to help you pass the current from the machine to the workplace and then back to the machine again. So uh, when you strike an arc with a TIG welder, you're just generating an arc between the end of this electrode and your workpiece. So this doesn't get consumed. So all it's doing is generating the arc, melting the workpiece and melting the filler rod. So one of the, the, the uh, variables about TIG that I really like is these are all quickly changeable. So I can unscrew these and replace these parts in seconds. So in this particular case, I've got quite a thin electrode in the, in the uh, torch, but if I wanted to weld something thicker and I needed to put more current into it, you know, you can melt these ones pretty quickly if you put too much current through them, but you can get bigger ones. So the collet body and everything else, you can get uh, a kit of these and you can take different size electrodes and you can also take different um, tungsten alloys and there's different alloys uh, used for different jobs. So this one's got a red tip on the end and that's used for ferrous materials and stainless steel and things like that. And the other common one is a white tip and I can't remember the exact uh, tungsten material that's used but it's used for aluminium so you've got different tungstens different sizes uh, used for different jobs for welding which is one of the big benefits for TIG welding okay so the general process when you're welding with TIG is there's a button on the back of the torch here and that's just a switch an on off switch and that's connected back to the machine through the uh, cabling and uh, through this cable here back to an input on the machine itself. So there's another, the, the smart people here will be looking at the other uh, fitting next to it. And that's for a foot pedal. So I can use a foot pedal to turn this on and off. And the foot pedal can also be used to modulate how much current is sent down here to the workpiece. So 
The big beauty of this particular machine is all the variability with these controls that gives me a, the ability to weld steel and stainless and aluminium. So when we talked about arc welding, we only really cared about this peak current dial here. But on the TIG welder, I can determine how much gas flow. So I can turn this torch on and I can have some gas flowing before the current starts. So I might have a couple of seconds of gas coming out to protect the workpiece before I turn the current on. So I've got pre-flow gas um, for pulse welding. So I can also pulse weld, which basically means current on, current off, current on, current off. And what that does is it just reduces the amount of heat that goes into the workpiece and can help reduce the distortion from all the heat that's going into it. So I've got a function here to pulse the current. So I don't have to do it manually. I could with a foot pedal, but the machine will do it automatically for me. So it'll tell me the basic current and the pulse frequency. So I can set the frequency of how fast it pulses and how much does it drop to when it goes back to the low current setting. So it's all automatic on this machine. Uh, downslope, so once I let go of the switch and it turns off, it'll gently ramp the current off um, out of the torch. And what that helps with is if you cut the current off very quickly, then the weld cools very quickly. And when it does that, it shrinks. So occasionally you get some cracking or some cratering in the weld. So if you just back the current off gently, then you reduce that shock cooling to the workpiece. So that's the control that lets me set how long the downslope will be for. Gas afterflow, so I've got a gas preflow and I've got a gas afterflow. So I can also decide how much gas is gonna flow after I let go of the torch. So maybe I want five seconds of gas flow and that just helps protect the weld as it's cooling down so it doesn't attract any nasties out of the atmosphere. And the other thing that's um, available on this particular machine is if I'm welding, as I've got it set up here with DC electrode positive, so if I'm welding aluminium, uh, what this does is it sends current in one direction and then it turns it around and sends it the other direction. So the machine automatically switches the direction of the current. And it does that automatically and it does it very, very fast. And that's required for helping you weld aluminium and that reverse action of the current going back the other way is what cleans the oxide layer off the aluminium and lets you get to the base aluminium underneath it. So as the current's going that way, we're cleaning and the current's going that way, we're welding. So we can control uh, how, how much of the time is the current going in that direction or that direction with some of the controls in this machine. So it's very, very flexible. And if I match it with the right filler materials, so I've got a bunch of filler rods, which I didn't bring over here with me. Uh, I've got filler rods for stainless steel, for steel, for cast aluminium, for sheet aluminium, um, all sorts of stuff. So it just gives you a whole lot of flexibility for motorcycle projects specifically. So it is my go-to machine. If you have got the inclination and a little bit of money and you can learn how to use one of these guys, there's pretty much nothing you can't do in terms of fabricating on a motorcycle. So hope that was useful. If you've got any questions, drop them down below and thanks for watching.